In today's video we're going to look at one of the most popular forms of poetry, the sonnet, and in particular I want to consider why you need to know about it. Well, the first thing that uh, we'd highlight is that the sonnet is a love poem, and increasingly modern poets use this ironically. Uh, Simon Armitage in particular will pick a subject matter where you're not really sure if the, um, the speaker in the poem is actually in love or just out of love. Uh, it's something that he invites the reader to consider. And he does it by presenting it in the sonnet form, so that we assume it's a love poem, but then the emotions within the poem are often contradictory. Um, now, that is a modern technique, but as we shall see, it's something that Shakespeare asked um, over 400 years ago. The attraction to a poet of writing a sonnet is the credibility and tradition behind it. It's a kind of way of announcing your skill as a poet. And why you need that skill is because there are very strict rules um, to sonnet writing. And before we look at how poets break those rules, let's look at what those rules might be. Sonnets were introduced into English um, from the Italian Renaissance, and the first kind that arrived were the Petrarchan sonnets. Uh, these were 14 lines long, with 10 syllables per line. Um, that's quite restrictive, but there's more. The first eight lines are called the octave. And then there is an imaginary break between the next six. The last six lines are called the sestet. And the break happens with the volta which is Italian for turn, and it happens between the eighth and the sixth line. So for us, in this poem, it's going to happen here. In the Volta, the poet asks us usually to see things from another point of view. So here, in our first part of the poem, we have um, Wordsworth's famous description of London, viewed from um, Westminster Bridge. Uh, it is a thing of beauty. Uh, nothing to show more fair on earth than London. But in the Sestet, we have what is almost a sacrilegious view, a view that um, goes against God here, or rather than going against him, suggests that man, in his creation of London, has surpassed God. And so London has a mighty heart. It has become personified and dear God is watching on, observing this mag magical transformation of the city into a being of its own making. The sun here, as you'll get used to by now, is a metaphor for God. Never did sun more beautifully steep in his first splendour. In other words, when God first created the world, and he did it naturally through valley and rock and hill, um, that was not as much of an achievement as what has happened with um, London. So the houses are personified and asleep. They're part of this great being. And so this becomes a love poem about London, where the object of love is heavenly, and perhaps even more heavenly than God himself. And this is done for effect. So hopefully you can see the purpose of the Volta there. And then the other way that the poet shows their skill is by keeping to a very strict rhyme scheme. Uh, so the first four lines are A, B, A, B, A, and then the next four are A, B, B, A, repeated, and then C, D, C, D, C, D. Um, Wordsworth has offered himself here very few rhymes. There are only four, in fact, which makes it more difficult. And one of the reasons that that's more difficult is that if the reader can continually guess what the next rhyme is going to be, the poem loses its sense of surprise and novelty and becomes much less satisfying. And so I've chosen this example to show you how hard the poet has to work uh, to fit within these rules, but still write something meaningful and memorable. Now let's look at one of Shakespeare's most famous sonnets. Uh, this one is a love poem, and it's to his mistress. And we shouldn't interpret mistress here 
as um, somebody outside of marriage necessarily. Um, there's no indication that the speaker in this is married. The mistress here is simply the counterpoint of master. She is the master of his heart, um, but because she's female, she's mistress. Of course, you can read more into this and decide that it is an actual mistress in the modern sense, and many people have done so. Here, you'll notice that Shakespeare is much freer with his rhymes. He begins at A and ends up at G. He has uh, far more choice in the number of rhymes he uses, and Shakespeare invented this form of the sonnet, and so it is known as the Shakespearean sonnet form. Uh, there are several other um, forms of sonnet which we don't need to go into here. What I'm trying to show you is the mechanics of a sonnet and why it's important that a poem is written in the sonnet form. You can see over here that Shakespeare sets his sonnet out in um, three quatrains for his first twelve lines and uh, just through the punctuations of the full stops you can see how it's structured that way. But he sets himself a greater challenge by having the volta at the final couplet. Now why that's a greater challenge is, as you saw in Wordsworth's poem, a split of eight and six between octave and sestet gives a sense of symmetry and balance to the poem. But here, the turn is much more difficult to make, that change in perspective, because there's only a couplet to do it in. Um, and Shakespeare's triumph here is that he manages that. So all of these lines, I'll let you read them for yourself if you're interested, uh, list all the commonplace ways that uh, poets use to declare how beautiful their love is, and um, Shakespeare parodies this and mocks it. Um, he picks on all those features of a woman that poets normally pick on, and says, well, actually, I'm much more realistic, and uh, my mistress is nothing like this godly, angelic creature that you poets um, rhapsodise about in your sonnets. But here comes the volta. And yet, by heaven, I think my love as rare as any she belied with false compare. And uh, here, he's suggesting that any woman who is compared falsely and therefore lied about um, to angels and gods, um, if they're compared to these angels and gods, it's not really real, we can't believe in it. But my love is incredibly rare because here I've listed exactly how down-to-earth and human and physical my lover is. Um, in the eyes of the world, she might not be anything special, but to me, she's the most special woman in the world. And so one way of interpreting this poem is that it's about true love and what true love is. And it's also about what poetry is. It's not about... Uh, wonderful flights of language and imagery which are actually merely poetic lies. It's about trying to express the truth in a new way. And so when you write about a poet, um, writing a sonnet, you have to deal with the fact that the poet is clearly trying to write in a literary tradition. It's attempt at um, saying, look, I can do this too. I'm a really skilled poet, pay attention. Uh, but what will distinguish you from other candidates is thinking about how the volta, the turn, is prepared for and um, what the poet is up to with that turn. And then finally, you're going to ask yourself how the poet breaks the rules of the sonnet for their own purposes. Finally, it's the structure and form of the poem that takes you into the A and A star category um, in an exam, and the sonnet ideally lends itself to you discussing these.